the hardest part about moving on would be the self-hatred. I don't think I have it in me to pick up the camera to shoot again. Ah, because the memories that I have with this camera is not about the amazing travels I had anymore. It's about the photos I shot, right? And then I manipulated the photos and then people started shaming me and then like now become like I have no talent already. What was your most toxic experience on the internet and how did it happen? When I first started on the dating app, I came across this individual. At first, it seemed like everything was going very well. Uh, but once I told him that I have a younger sister, he's like, can I, uh, can I see a photo of your younger sister? Uh, I remember he was like, well, here, I'm like holding on to your photo. I can release this anytime if you don't send me the photo. So um, I found out that my photos were being transmitted across Discord servers and they were making a lot of like sexual comments. They said like, oh yeah, she will look good with like having sex with them. So they were like imagining that. And I found out because one of the guys in the group chat reached out to me and he told me about it, but he also was doing so so that he could send me an explicit photo of himself. Uh, my most toxic uh, experience would definitely be my Photoshop saga. I Photoshop my, my photos and then, um, wow, it's like huge. So I, I, I didn't even know how to react also because, uh, I mean, just imagine waking up, not knowing what's happening, right? And then suddenly you become like the world most hated person for maybe that, that, that day or like the next, the week lah, the week. Every second, right, of me just refreshing my notifications, there were like, 89 new comments, 70 new comments, and it's all negative. And they were from people who don't follow me, and then after that, BBC, they, they covered it, Daily Mail. Yeah, it was like global news. So I came up with a book when I was 19. Two influencers, I don't know how to describe them, but they are like public figures. And they decided to do a video on trashing my book, and they eventually threw my book in the dustbin. And they were using like sexual like context when they read my poems, which is obviously very disrespectful. Lah. And because everybody is very supportive of these two people, like whatever they say, they just go, you know? Yeah, so they jump in on the bandwagon, gun, lah, basically. I, I did remain silent because I felt that it was my coping mechanism. And I'm just like so tired. I was just super, super tired and drained that I didn't even want to stand up for myself, even though I knew that I wasn't wrong. It was during that period in 2013 to 2015 where uh, eating disorders were quite underground. Like, I remember the group that I joined, I think there were like over 20 plus of us, 20 women, talking about our eating disorders and we literally went to that group chat to get inspiration. Or my favourite one back then, Minspo. Because the community that I had, right, uh, they were mostly largely online and overseas and easily accessible also. So I remember showing them my caloric intake, which was under 800 calories. And then immediately, right, what she said was, uh, Oh my god, you fat f Is that really what you want to do to yourself? Are you sure you really want to be skinny? What makes you think you deserve to eat today? I remember thinking, like, as a 15-year-old, like, Yeah, you're right. You're right. Oh my god. I shouldn't be eating f You know, I remember it being very shout-outs about it. When she was describing like, oh, the photos being spread on Tumblr with sexual caption, I was like, oh, I've actually like been on Tumblr and seen these photos of Singaporean girls. Yeah, so it's like, actually quite yeah. rampant. Um, a lot of my friends have also experienced things like that. It's just quite disgusting to see like people imagining these things about you and like knowing the things that they're doing with your photos. Like, and these photos are just very regular my day-to-day -day life photos. My address was being uh, circulated all over Facebook. People splash paint on my door. Black paint, yeah, people splash black paint. My mom was terrified. I was so scared to go out. I had to wear hoodies all the time. Even when I'm driving, I won't, uh, at the red light, I won't stop beside another car because I'm worried that if they know it's me, they might bang me. There was a lot of external things happening to me. I was getting bullied also. Uh, I was bullied for um, Wow, actually there's a myriad of things. But because back then, right, of the bullying in secondary school, it got to a point where, you know, a lot of the things that were said online were said in person and then it manifested itself physically. Because I was losing a lot of weight, right, very quickly, you know, I wanted to hide that from them. 
because I didn't want to give them more things to make fun of me. Did you deserve it? Did I deserve it? Uh, I honestly, I think I did. I just kept telling myself for the first three days at least that I totally deserve it because I was greedy for money. Uh, so many campaigns, right? I just want to close it. So sometimes when I cannot uh, achieve a certain kind of background or a certain kind of mood for the photo, I'll be like, okay, you know what? Take the, short, the, the, the shortcut out. Just do it, close the campaign, invoice them, done. Yeah, so this was my mentality, which was wrong, which was wrong also. I definitely don't feel like I deserve to be bullied for it because like, whatever I, I've written is based on mostly 95% life experiences. And I'm thinking if it's a way of expressing myself, I'm not hurting anybody yet, basically. Actually, I agree, like, you deserve 0% for your situation. Yeah, I don't do anything yeah, wrong. Yeah, you don't do anything at In all. that situation, yeah, I don't yeah, do yeah, anything wrong. Yeah. I feel it's also a lot to do with, I feel, the reputation I had before that. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. so everybody just assumes right, that you are this kind of person. Especially when I put myself on social media when I was very, very young, right? I'm basically growing up like with everybody watching me it's i mean the sad truth is everybody's gonna hold it on you uh, for me i agree with uh you know an influencer's mistake being magnified but i think it crosses the line when somebody just over photos they tell you to kill yourself mm. they constantly just harass the people around you for that I don't think that's constructive anymore. I think that is threatening already. Just because my photos are out in the public or that I have a public account or I have more followers, I don't think it's okay for people to, dis to do these things to you. Yeah, so for myself, I'm diagnosed with hypersexuality disorder, but it's based on sexual trauma, which uh, what I was told is based on like the outrage or modesty case when I was younger. It affected my mental health because now finding partners is the only way I know to feel like I'm worth something. So it's very hard for me to put myself in the mindset where like uh, they are in the wrong, whereas like I'm innocent because I'm the one that actually seeks out for this sexual experience. So it does feel like I was like asking for it in that sense. I did post a lot about my progress, yeah, in getting skinnier or looking pretty, right? Like I felt like it was karma, you know. That's why, in a sense, I feel like I deserved everything that happened to me. So being exposed to eating disorder images online, can you share with me what was the trigger behind it? So um, I'm living with my mom now, yeah. But uh, throughout the whole process, you know, I've witnessed things like. Uh, physical abuse, like domestic abuse. Whenever my dad was about to come up and hurt me, my sister would always stand in front of me and take the beating, like literally take the beating for me until like hangers broke, belts broke. A lot of those things happen, like the uncontrollable, uncontrollable things, like uh, the rape thing that I witnessed. I started carrying a lot of guilt on top of the emotional baggage, you know, I just kept it in because I didn't have anyone to talk to. The only community I had was the anorexic, the anorexia community or my part, my best friend. And then it begs the question like, then how do I get help? Oh, are you just being overly sensitive? Wow. <laughs> All the questions very heavy. Yeah. <laughs> I am a very sensitive person, but I think that over the years of what I've been through actually made me even more sensitive. Mm. And I kind of ran away from it. And I actually went to Melbourne for like months, trying to like escape everything. Yeah, it was a really tough time lah. Because even now, right, when people say, oh, you got a book, right? I feel like they're just mocking me. But they may be genuinely just asking that I, if I got a book. Yeah, I... I don't trust people that, uh, that easily anymore. Friends who I thought were friends uh, started to unfollow me and started to post uh, about the articles and then mocking me like ha 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 are going down. You thought everybody wanted to be your friend but look, they just used you and now when you're down, they still kick you even uh, lower. So this, this, this were all the things that um, uh, went through my head. La. And then there are definitely clients who I thought we were friends. La. I even go out of my way. I would even send her around to pick up her kids, send her home. Are you serious? I'm, I'm damn serious. And then right, once the saga hit right, drop me, send, send me this termination letter and I never heard from her ever again. That's cold. Cold. That hurt me the most actually. Like the people, because I think I'm quite a sentimental and uh, emotional person. So I like to believe that I can trust everyone and I can be friends with everybody. 
but that really changed me for good lah, even now. Yeah. The trauma, right, that comes with it, it's not just me feeling scared. It's also when I get up in the morning, my mom don't know ma, don't know uh, when I'll open my door. So once I open my door, I go out, right? I'll just see her crying there with tissue. And then she's just scrolling on her iPad. And she's just reading more articles. I will just feel so much shame. It's not to the public anymore, it's to my family. Previously, I was a bit more outspoken on Instagram talking about like those sexual assault cases and then sometimes I'll share like my personal experience. Mm. So when I'm sharing my personal experience, they said that, um, oh, why do you need to let everyone know that you were a victim of these things? Like, are you victimizing yourself? But after like thinking about it, I do think like that was not very fair of them to have said that. Especially because we've uh, experienced it ourselves, everyone uh, like keep our own like friends safe. I don't think that um, it's fair to just diminish experiences like that and calling us overly sensitive for reacting like justifiably to things that happen to us. Our issues are mostly invisible. So it's very hard to justify that yes, we are suffering. I was getting bullied for months, you know, in my teacher's class. Whenever I approach my teachers to talk about mental health, I get shut down almost immediately in front of class. Whenever I went to school, I felt like what if I just jumped out of the building right now? It just like those kind of thoughts will come up in my mind, you know, to make them carry the guilt because I feel like, for me, uh, I feel like death is an easy way out. Uh, can you see it? This one was supposed to be the one that ended my life. It was supposed to be. So what was the most difficult part about moving on? Like when I interact with them and they compliment me and uh, and then it like fits into my ego, something like that. So it feels very hard to like step away from the space, especially if it's somebody that I already have a very like uh, close bond with. Then do you feel like you are in a more healthy kind of space now when you use social media? I would say no. <laughs> I mean, outside of like sexual experiences, uh, like. If I were to go on Instagram, you know there's always like the comparison aspect. Oh, these people are in such a happy, happy relationship, whereas I'm over here like seeking external validation from like different people and like not being able to find like my own uh, like one one person. When like people were reacting very negatively to the things I was talking about, everyone around us or people who have gone through similar things kind of just like forget it and move on with their lives because they realise there's nothing much they can do about it or nothing much they can change. I do think it's quite like disheartening to like continue talking about it. So sometimes you just have to accept that there are just people like that. And these people will not give you the closure that you want. You just have to like get it from within yourself. The hardest part about moving on would be the self-hatred. I don't think I have it in me to pick up the camera to shoot again ah, because the memories that I have with this camera is not about the amazing travels I had anymore. It's about the photos I shot right and then I manipulated the photos and then people started sh shaming me and then like now become like I have no talent already. Yeah, so I escaped lah definitely. I mean uh, for you, you had your own ways of escaping. I escaped by meeting people meeting new people, gaming, and I didn't want to be around people who were progressing. Yeah. Because it made me feel even shittier, honestly. I think the most difficult part about moving on is I feel like it kind of made me like a less confident person. I have been so afraid of this book that I publish out of my own heart since the start. I'm just like afraid of it. So I actually stopped writing, I stopped like reading my like own work only maybe two months ago, I took it out and I, I read it. And I'm like, I, I still like some of my work inside. But in my head, I'm like, because I wrote it when I was 19, how am I supposed to have the brain of myself right now? Yeah. I would have done things differently, but I don't regret. How I attend to the people who are in, you know, big sagas or like, you know, they are shamed online whatsoever. I think most people, they underestimate the power of like that one simple text because I've been through it when I was at my lowest, right? People who message me, even like, stay strong, Daryl, rooting for you. I tell you, it means so much. I started uh, recovering 
after I graduated from secondary school and I was out from that kind of environment. I didn't want to bring the same energy or like negative energy into ITE. Maybe I should move on from it, but I shouldn't forget it. Maybe I should forgive the people who hurt me. And maybe I should forgive myself for reacting the way that I did. Uh, I opened up to my sister when I knew for a fact that, okay, I have accepted that this is a problem. You know, I don't have to love myself yet. I don't have to accept myself yet. But I just need to respect myself enough so that people around me won't be so worried. That was what became a motivator for me to get better. And then it was also during the same period where uh, online, a lot of body positive uh, content was coming out from a lot of uh, Singaporeans or a lot from uh, a lot of international influencers also. In a sense, that helped me a lot uh, because like, it changed my perception of food and that this is how you should be respecting it. What is one advice that you would give your old self? <laughs> uh, there's a lot. Uh, uh, I would say... Um, what would I tell her? I think maybe just like be less emotional, like emotionally reactive and like just be careful of like the people I can't let into my life. Like I will try not to post where I, my locations and like in real time yeah, because I think previously when I did post like if I'm on a run or just where I'm at, some people will like reply my Insta stories and say like oh are you here or oh, do you live here like and I think it got a bit scary, like, so I just kind of stopped. Yeah, I would say the same about like being open, like knowing what we can share online and what has to be kept. Right now, it's, it's like a work in progress where I'm still learning to set firmer boundaries because I feel like I'm the type that we, I will trust you before until you give me a reason uh, not to. Remember to always be humble. Hmm, don't feel invincible because to be very honest, I think at one point at the peak, uh, I felt quite invincible. Like everything that I do right would turn into gold. If you want me to rewind time, I don't think I will change anything also because I got to filter out a lot of people. I got to really see the ugliness of like certain people also. And then I also got to see the very, the real friends who are still with me till today. Well, I think one advice I'll give to my younger self is to not doubt yourself and know who you truly are. If that was my daughter, I would be so heartbroken. Cause like, I know her the most. If I could like talk to her, I'd be like, don't be affected like so much that you feel that these anonymous comments can make you harm yourself. Cause at the end of the day, why would you hurt the like vessel you're in and the person you have for the rest of your life? It has impacted a lot of my decision making and it has impacted a lot of my relationships. Because most of the time when I meet new people, especially earlier this year in August, I remember having to do this, like put my hands behind my back, just to make sure people didn't see my arms. Because that's not what the first impression I want to give them, you know. And if only my past self actually considered the chance of me getting better, that there was hope. Maybe I should have just gone online to find a community that was recovering instead of a community that was hurting in the same footsteps as me. Because we are living in a day and age where we can choose to find the information that we want and we can choose to filter out what we don't want to see also. And that's a personal choice. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of Can Us Man made in collaboration with IMDA as part of their Digital for Life movement. Social media is great. It's a tool for expressing ourselves and staying connected with our loved ones. But insensitive and mindless comments can turn it into a toxic place. We hope this video serves as a reminder for each of us to be a responsible social media user. Find out more at go.gov.sg digitalwellness.